Hi there, uh, my name's Leaf, and today I want to get you started with GML and just up and running in five minutes. So without further ado, let's pop open Game Maker Studio. Maybe you've made a game in the past uh, with a different engine and you want to try out Game Maker. Maybe you've always wanted to make a game but never gotten around to it. Let's try to just hit the ground running. I love fast tutorials. I love watching them. I love making them. So click on new, click on Game Maker language, and we're just going to create a new project. I'm going to call it whatever I want. doesn't matter. So we got this big empty workspace, nothing there yet. And then over here, these very important folders. Uh, let's start out by creating a sprite which is just any kind of graphic. So I'm going to click on Sprite. Let's make a character Sprite. We can name it. I'm going to call it SPR underscore just to keep my sprites organized and my other types of assets. I'll give a different prefix, but we're going to call this SPR hero. Click on edit image. Defaults to 64 by 64. That's a lot bigger than like say Nintendo size. So I'll click image, resize all frames, bring this down to a more Nintendo-esque 16 by 16. Click apply. Uh, let's just draw a quick sprite here, give him some legs, uh, maybe give him a torso, some arms, and give him a head. F for the fill tool, nice shortcut, give him some nice realistic colored skin, maybe give him some brown pants and purple shirt. Looks good. Okay, so now we have our main character. It's not going to run any code though, it's just a graphic. So let's click on objects, right click, create, brand new object here instead of using SPR as a prefix let's use O and we're going to call him O underscore hero click on no sprite here assign the sprite that we just created all right now we've got a hero with a sprite and lastly we need a room to put him in so game maker creates a room by default but let's make our own room so I'm going to click on create create a room I'm going to call it RM underscore let's say room one click on the widget here drag it to the top of the list so that this is the first room to run when game maker starts We've got two layers in our room, instances and background. We can create many more, but let's stick with these two for now. Change the background color to like a nice sky blue just to make the game a little bit more immersive. And then on the instances layer, I'm gonna drag the hero into the center and then press F5 or click on the play button and we should be able to just run our game. So there we go, we've got a game. Nothing happens when I push the keys, there's no enemies, nothing interesting, but it's a fully running game. So let's see if in these five minutes we can cram in some player input so we can actually move our hero around. So double click on the hero. Let's add some code to it. Click on the add event. And there's two major types of events, create events and step events. These are the ones we will use more than any other. So let's do a create event. Here we can assign some variables. The create event will run one time at the beginning of the room when the object is created. So it only runs once. So I'm gonna set our speed, totally arbitrary variable name, and I'm gonna set it equal to five. Note the semicolon at the end of the line. It's a good habit to get into with GML. Next, we need an event that's actually going to run every frame to check to see if the player is pushing a key. So I'm going to create a new event, step event, a regular step. And every single frame, we have to check to see, all right, is the player pressing the up key, down key, left key, right key, maybe an attack key? So I'm going to create these four arbitrary variables to start, up, down, left, right. I could have named these variables anything I want. I'm just going to use these to store whether or not we're pushing that key. So there's a built-in function in GameMaker called keyboard check, and there's a built-in macro called VKUp. Uh, keyboard check basically returns true if this key is getting pressed, or false if it's not. Uh, so let's just do a keyboard check for every one of those keys. So we've got down, left, and right, and these have codes as well. How do I have these memorized? Well, because I use these ones all the time. But if you weren't sure what the codes were for the different keys, you can actually just middle click on this, brings up a tutorial, and you can see the codes for all the major keys that you'd use. All right, so back into the project. So now we've got the values for are we pressing up, are we pressing down. Let's change this built-in variable called x. It's green, which means it's a built-in variable. And we're going to add to it whatever the right is minus whatever the left is. And same with our y, we're going to add to it whatever the down is minus what, whatever the up is. So if we run the game, we should be able to move our character around. So yeah, I can move my character in any direction, diagonally, pretty cool. But why is that happening? Well, let's see if I can explain it in our remaining time, which is probably like, I'm not looking at a clock, but it's not much. So let's say, let's put it like this, and I'll make it a little bigger so we can see. Um, X, we're adding to X. Let's say right was getting pressed. So right would be true, which is the same as the number one. So right is getting pressed. And let's say left is not getting pressed. So it would be false, which would be equivalent to the number zero. Well, one minus zero is still one. So we're saying add one to X. Makes sense. So our X value is being incremented by one every frame that that's being held down. 
that explains r moving to the right and for example if if right was not getting pressed and left was getting pressed then 0 minus 1 is negative 1 which means that we're adding negative 1 to x which is the same as subtracting 1 from x so we would be moving left so that's essentially how that works the only thing that we're not taking into account here is that in our create event we created the speed variable so let's multiply that 0 1 or negative 1 value by the speed and by doing that we're able to scale it with whatever speed variable we assign when we click the play button again now we're moving at 5 so there we go. Now we've got a character that moves around. We've got graphics, we've got background color, we have step event, create event in five minutes. I hope this is fun for you. Uh, I love to try to cram in some more cool stuff in a, maybe another five minute video, maybe even do something crazy like a seven minute video if the concepts get more complex. So have a great day. I hope this gets you started on your Game Maker adventure. Cheers.